Good morning. And it is an indeed a good and beautiful fall morning here in Patrick County. You know, sometimes when we come to scripture, we're reminded of the beauty and the wonder of this world. We're reminded of our ties to this world and we're reminded that we're to make this world a better place. But other times when we come to scripture, we're reminded that our hope is not in this world, that we have a, a glorious world awaiting us. We have the hope of the resurrection. We have eternal life awaiting us. Well, today is one of those mornings. Today we're looking at Psalm 16 again. And I want to look at the end of the Psalm, verses 8 to 11. Follow along with me, if you will. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices my flesh also dwells secure for you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, or let your holy one see corruption you make known to me the path of life in your presence there is fullness of joy and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore this section of psalm 16 is actually prophecy of the resurrection of Jesus. Peter cited these verses to preach about the resurrection on that first Pentecost. You can read Peter's quoting of this section in Acts chapter two, verses 25 to 28. Paul likewise, when preaching to the Jews at Antioch, quoted Psalm 16, verse 10. Both Peter and Paul saw this section of Psalm 16 as uniquely pointing to the resurrection of Jesus. And that's because of the second half of verse 10 in particular. Now the first part of verse 10 is amazing. It's incredible. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol. Sheol is the place of the dead. It was viewed by the Israelites as the gloomy underworld for departed souls. And you know, all who trust in Christ surely believe that our souls will not be abandoned in a place like Sheol. We trust in the Lord and we believe we will be with the Lord forever. But you know, the second half of verse 10 is even more incredible because it states, or let your Holy One see corruption. This Holy One's body will never decay. And there's only one that this can describe. Both Peter and Paul remind us in their sermons and acts that this text cannot be talking about David for his body saw decay. It also cannot speak of us. Though we will be raised, though we have the assurance of the resurrection, unless Jesus returns in our lifetimes, our bodies will also see decay. This verse is speaking of Jesus. Peter, after quoting Psalm 16, stated very clearly in his Acts 2 sermon, verses 29 to 32. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. You see, Peter believes that David, inspired by God, told to the one who would fulfill God's promise that a descendant of David would forever sit upon his throne. And that descendant is Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he's the one whose body did not see decay. God preserved Christ's body from corruption while it was lying in the tomb. And then he breathed life back into Jesus' body on that first Easter morning. And because Christ lives, we who trust in Christ also have hope of the resurrection to eternal life. You know, unless Christ returns in our lifetime, and, and I pray he does, but if he does not, then our bodies will also be laid in a tomb. But that's not 
the end of the story, folks. The Apostle Paul, wishing to give hope to all who grieve, wrote in that glorious fourth chapter of 1 Thessalonians, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Well, folks, I do indeed encourage you with these words. Believe this good news. Jesus' body did not see decay and he was raised on the third day. Therefore, those in Christ will also be raised and we will live with the Lord forever. Let's thank the Lord this day and every day for that wonderful assurance. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the hope of the resurrection. Thank you for the amazing ways in which you prophesy Christ's resurrection throughout the Old Testament and how you fulfill that prophecy in Jesus in the New Testament. And Lord, seeing your faithfulness recorded in Scripture, seeing your faithfulness in Christ, we trust you to be faithful again and again throughout all eternity. Therefore, we trust in you. We believe in the hope of the resurrection. We believe that as Jesus was raised, we will be raised to spend eternity with you. Lord, we long for that day. And we pray, come, Lord Jesus, come. But until that day, make us your faithful servants. Lord, may we faithfully serve you here, looking forward to that glorious day. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, folks, go out and enjoy this beautiful fall day. Enjoy this beautiful creation that the Lord has given us here but also look forward to and long for that glorious day when we live with him forever. Goodbye and have a great week. God bless you.